Uh, Mahmoud Chuck Connors, thank you for joining us today. Uh, for those who don't know you, if I thank can just you. introduce you. Um, I know you don't like being referred to as such, but you've studied Islamic sciences, jurisprudence, these kind of things for many years, as well as Quran. You're a Hafiz of Quran, and you're also undertaking, you're a scientist, yes, uh, yeah. you're undertaking your PhD in cosmology. Mm -hmm. um, so I've asked you here because um, we have a lot of young people who are now getting confused about the science in Quran issue. Yes, yes. You've addressed this in detail in your previous talks which are uh, available on YouTube mm -hmm. um, but today I have gone to uh, Wiki Islam which mm -hmm. is a seems to be kind of a popular site bashing Islam on the internet mm -hmm. supposed to be like a database of Islamic stuff but it's really just sort of attacking Islam, the Quran, Muslims and uh, I've looked under the section of scientific errors in the Quran okay. and um, I was hoping for my sake and for the Teddy's sake because the Teddy saw some of these things and now she's quite confused basically got some doubts about Islam worried about the Quran is it really scientifically accurate should the Teddy apostate so really for, for my sake and mm -hmm. the Teddy's sake, if you could address some of these issues we'd be really grateful. Uh, excellent, yeah, go for it, just uh, let's, let's see what these questions are. So I, I'm just gonna go through these quite randomly, I mean it's a massive list so anyone looking at this might be shocked because I don't know if you saw it, there was like how many, like dozens, like a hundred errors or something in the Quran about scientific okay. errors. So. Uh, I'm just going through some of these at random, they're not really in order of importance mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. So here's one, uh, earth and heavens were ripped apart. Some apologists, uh, I think they mean you, com claim that the following verse is compatible with the Big Bang Theory. I'm, Actually I'm not you're, you're not an advocate of the no, Big Bang. I'm not an apologist as well. So That's true yes, and, and I know you don't like being called an Islamic scholar but no, you no, did study for many years and you know. I studied over over a decade. Over a decade, so okay, yeah. although you don't like that title. Um, but according to this theory, the universe was formed 13.8 billion years ago due to a rapid expansion from a singularity. Mm. The earth was formed 4.54 billion years ago from an accretion of debris that surrounded the precursor of the sun. Uh, there was no separation <laughs> of the joined earth and heavens as this verse suggests. So here's the verse, do not be unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation before we clove them asunder, we made water, we made from water every living thing, will they not then believe? Quran 2130, they haven't given the original Arabic or mm. which translation they're using, but their critique is, this verse suggests that the sun is flat and can be folded up. Um, the sun appears to be a flat disk from the perspective of a person on the earth. Hmm. Now I think that is um, another verse, uh, but we can we can check them hmm. here. Like um, yes, we're saying the that first one was. Uh, did you say twenty one thirty? Okay, because yeah, the first verse is that the heavens and the earth were joined together, mm -hmm. and um, you know we clove them asunder. Their criticism of that is there was no separation of the joined earth. Um, and heavens, as this verse suggests, it is in fact a repetition mm -hmm. of a cosmic egg myth in which an egg-like structure was split into two halves, the lower half forming the earth and the upper half forming the heaven. So they are saying, by the way, they've given no scientific references or even references for this mythology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so despite being kind of a Wikipedia type page, there's like no footnotes, no references. Okay. But they're saying uh, Quran 2130 uh, it's a rip-off of an egg myth and has nothing to do with, uh, you know, modern cosmology. Okay, so the, uh, I, f I found the verse here, so mm. it is a sound of Bismillah. وَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ So in this verse, um, it says, did that, like, did the unbelievers uh, not realize that the heavens and the earth were one solid mass. Then we tore them apart, and we made every living being out of water. Will then, will they then not believe? So, um, 
What is their criticism? What are they saying? Is this a verse wrong completely? You know, I've got to be honest with you, I'm struggling to see what their criticism is. Uh, basically, they are saying that this is a... there was no separation and the earth and the heavens were not joined. And, uh, 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 are they saying like uh, this verse is compatible with the Big Bang Theory or something? They're saying it isn't compatible with the Big Bang and it's ripped off from cosmic egg myths. Okay, yeah, which here, they okay let's talk yeah. about the, the, this, um, first of all, Big Bang Theory. Hmm. Big Bang Theory is, is uh, a just uh, one out of many models. So you can, you can also have, let's say, Big Crunch model. So you have um, uh, other models like in uh, cosmology. And uh, so first of all, Big Bang Theory is under construction so it is not like something 100% that you know every single cosmologist or uh, scientist uh, are working on Big Bang Theory there are other theories as well so you never know which one will be the uh, one we can explain you know the whole universe and uh, in this observable universe let's say in this entirety and so hence, um, first of all, um, science and Qur'an, there, there are two different things. Qur'an talks about human affairs, human interaction, how humans should live their lives. And also Qur'an talks about the surroundings of humans, what humans can see. Um, and also from the unseen realm as well. Um, Qur'an is not a scientific book. It does not uh, like uh, try to prove like, experimentally this thing. So because it's not the aim of Quran. Hence, uh, this verse does not talk about Big Bang. I don't know who made that up. Okay. Well, Muslims do say that, and now Wiki Islam is kind of repeating that and saying. Yeah. So basically, um, just two random people. Uh, they are just, uh, I think, uh, fighting. Okay. And uh, unfortunately. To me, it's just so ridiculous because the, the verse does not talk about Big Bang Theory, hmm. okay? And then... Um, well, what is the verse talking about, uh, Chuck Connors? I mean, in your opinion, uh, they're the saying verse it's is uh, saying, uh, a cosmic egg myth? No, it has nothing to do with cosmic egg myth or anything else. The verse is saying, now we need to read like um, these verses in context, okay? So, we need to look what comes before these verses and then what comes afterwards so and here in this verse is clearly talking about heavens and the earth but if it is talking about heavens and the earth like big bang is a universe it's a cosmological model so you cannot even compare them, you know, like by looking at Earth, you cannot say, oh, there you go, um, the universe, you know, should be like this or, or formed in this way. So this is all absurd. So, um, uh, yeah, so th that's why, like, uh, I just, it just doesn't make sense to me how they, they compare these things and it's co completely to me like it's a... Uh, Right. Okay, yeah, so, so you're not happy with Muslims or non-Muslims finding no, or not finding the Big Bang yeah, in it, this ayat it, it of the Quran? It doesn't talk about Big Bang. Hmm. Some, some individual or some people, they say, oh, it's a Big Bang. Hmm. And then some others, they are trying to refute those people. And like, they are trying to refute something which is not certain, it's just an assumption. Are you saying if we were to look in these tafsirs which you presumably studied, like Tafsir Kabir of Imam no, no, Rad, no, we you, won't find these? No, no. So no. before you studied cosmology, yeah. you studied this kind of commentaries on the Quran and yeah, your yeah. impression wasn't that this is to do with some kind of... No. Okay? No. Also the other thing is like uh, these uh, translations, they're not Quran, okay? So translations, if you're reading translations, this is not Quran. Hmm. This is uh, the like approximation of what that verse is, hmm. uh, yeah. So saying, 
it's, it's not yeah go on. Well, and you're right the, the the second question i kind of ran into uh, yes so um that, that the, one that's is uh, 881 verse 811 and the problem there is when the sun with his spacious light that's in brackets okay. uh, is folded up that's not in brackets uh, mm -hmm. and their complaint is that this verse suggests that the sun is flat and can mm -hmm. be folded up the sun appears as a flat disk from the perspective of a person on earth but the sun is in fact a near perfect sphere an oblate spheroid mm -hmm. the verse implies the author's ignorance of this fact uh, so again we've not had any references uh, mm -hmm. But they assure us that from the perspective of a person on Earth, the uh, Sun um, mm -hmm. is a near perfect sphere, okay, uh, yeah, but yeah, appears yeah. as a mm -hmm. flat disk from our perspective. And this verse they're saying says the Sun will be folded up, therefore, it's implying okay. the Sun is flat. That sounds pretty stupid, even to me, as a non scientific, non uh, Islamic, or you know, it, but okay. what do you say? Again, like, um, okay, this is the Surah to Takwir. Um, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ida shamsu kuvirat. First of all, again, we need to know the context of this verse, and um, um, uh, uh, we're this, not getting a whole lot this, of context here. Okay. We've just got no. isolated verse, which is yeah, being so used. What this verse is talking about is actually doing like the doomsday, hmm. when like you know um, the star um, is actually. Um, you know, scientifically, it will you know start like losing um, its uh, power, and then it will uh, expand. You know, uh, so uh, it, you know we know that you know stars they can um, evolve from uh, one phase to another phase, and at the moment, for example, our star is a, a relatively young star, and uh, so um, it it went through certain stages. And now, um, still, you know, it's, it's, it's in that process of evolving, and uh, so like other stars, so one day, you know, uh, stars may turn uh, like red giant, right? And uh, so some of them they they become white dwarfs. Some of them, according to you know, with the, with respect to their sizes, etc., they may turn into uh, neutron stars or black holes. So. Um, in the end, this verse, what this is talking about, when that when that time comes, it's not talking about now. When that time comes, what will happen is uh, the 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 word which is translated as folded up is he kuvirat. Hmm. Kuvirat is actually, um, in a way, layers by layers or layer by layer something is being kind of going like this like for example let's say you have a disc and then the disc you, you put one more layer here then one more layer here you know that kind of like uh, you know Ainamas like they, they so the you turbans, mean like wrapped up? yeah in, in a way like that that sort of yeah, okay, so, so it's not folded like a sheet of paper. No, no. Did, no is that what an uh, Arabic speaker, because I know you, you studied kind of Arabic yeah, language um, a lot, um, is that what an Arabic so, yeah. would, would take it to mean folded up? or no, I mean, I mean Kurat would be uh, understood in, in this um, verse um, in that manner. Like, uh, like, you know, how people, they put like these turbans, they hmm. put one layer and then another layer kind of thing. Hmm. So the sun will expand. Yeah, from what I understand, what this is uh, saying, this is talking about the um, end of end times of of. Uh, so again, it's not a, scientific. A, it's, it's like just, star, basically, yeah. like our sun. Mm. So it's saying that basically the sun will one day will die. Basically, that's what it means. Okay. So and so when when it is dying, we can see from here that uh, there's a process of its death as well. Okay, did you, yeah. the Teddy, or any of the commentators of Quran ever understand this verse to mean that mm. the sun is a flat disk and is going nope. to be false? <laughs> no, okay. I cannot. So, this is, is not a single look. Although the commentaries are the comments uh, of people, you know, according to their best ability to understand these verses, um, uh, out of you know all the uh, classical tafsir that I have uh, read, 
there is not a single like uh, Mufassir who uh, understood this as um, the sun is a flat disk. Okay. And even if they did, even if they did, what's got to do with, with this verse? Because um, it is their understanding. Like this person who is claiming that it is flat, he understands it as flat, and then he's refusing that flatness. I read it, I do not see that as flat because it is not. Okay, so, um, that makes sense. And also, it is talking about the end day, not the sun at the moment. Okay, so it seems like Wiki and, Islam uh, yeah. has its own kind of tafsir or commentary of the There's Quran. Just, uh, to me, like uh, I feel like um, we are wasting time, but uh, there are some people well, that we need to just. Um, my my teddy bear went on the net and completely confused. Out, yeah. So yeah, needs to be needs yeah, to so, be tackled sadly. Um, so, in your opinion, then, do we need a, a scientific commentary of the Quran, and B, do Muslims have anyone qualified to furnish this commentary? It's just you know so interesting. It's talking about like either shamsu kuwirat, and then it says well, either nujumun kadarat, like after that. Uh, so like either nujumun kadarat. So this is like from what I understand. I will be biased here because I studied uh, astronomy. So uh, this, to me, like this is reminding me of um, like when the stars um, they just um, they become like dim, hmm. like their their fuel runs out. So um, because they are powered up uh, by uh, different kinds of I would say uh, processes like a nuclear energy process uh, or uh, you know so different and so when um, like when the hydrogen is being burned and then uh, so when there's not enough hydrogen left so that means um, uh, the the equilibrium between uh, the forces of pressure and then the gravitation uh, force will be um, changed and when that changes and the collapse of, of that star is deemed to happen. So when I read the first bit, the Shamsu Kuvirat, this just immediately tells me that the sun will also come to an end. And then when it says when the stars shall scatter away, I mean I don't understand why even this comment like uh, this translation is to me it doesn't make sense scatter away um, because in Kedarat is, is in a way like um, when something like like goes away and uh, or um, or like uh, you start let's say you look at something and uh, which is emitting light and that light is getting dimmer and dimmer mm. So, I mean, you've made this point so, in other right. talks that you have a problem with, I think, most if not all of the translations of Quran into English. Because, I mean, that's quite yeah, a big difference. Scatter away, fade away is, yeah. is, is quite important, yeah, I, so. uh, cosmologically, I'm imagining. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, this is really, this. I mean, these words in Arabic, they have multiple meanings. Hmm. And so, the, hence, like, we need to understand the context of these verses. And uh, for this verse is completely is talking about um, the doomsday, mm. like the end of uh, end the of solar times. system yeah. uh, or the universe. You know what? So we have no knowledge about that. You know, in the future. But what? Yeah. So here, the God is telling us that you know one day, everything will come to an end. Even the the star, the sun, that you see, like wow, it's amazing, huge, distant. Will come to an end. That's what this is saying. It's not. It's like I don't understand. Like why people make up things like this. What, what, what flat? It doesn't even say flat. Mm. I mean, gosh. Uh, so yeah. from from what you're saying, it seems like um, 
let alone Muslims having a scientific commentary on Quran, even the translations yeah. are problematic. problematic. So maybe yeah. both Muslims and non-Muslims are uh, quite far from mm -hmm. like using the science in Quran, arguments for or against the Quran, mm -hmm. which, okay. I, I, but by the way, when I say, you know, like, oh, it's moving away, this, that, yeah, these are like uh, my understanding of that particular uh, verb. Uh, from uh, like as far as I remember from uh, from the uh, tafsirs like what that specific word means uh, although they, they may have uh, multiple meanings uh, I look at you know all these verses when I look at them I look at them cr uh, critically so like you know what 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 is really trying to say like this verse and if I notice that I would definitely like share it with others and I would also raise my concerns. I'm not like stupid enough to believe in something which is uh, obviously so absurd for everyone. Well, I think this is what Kuma was worried about. Are Muslims believing in absurd things without engaging their intellect yeah. and scientific mind? And I think this is what these uh, kind of uh, attacks on Islam are trying to uh, to show, but um, it, it, it looks like that's not really a problematic yeah, it's just, verse. Uh, it, okay, it's like uh, the, these verses are easy to understand, and but people make it complicated uh, by um, making assumptions. So this and, and this has to stop. So all these apologists and, and people who who have that you know feeling of uh, to show off or uh, like uh, or I will prove that I will prove this you know so like we need to have uh, calmness we need to understand one another so the, the, not like you know this person is attacking another person no one is attacking Quran everyone is attacking everyone else's assumptions and then they are saying that the Quran is like that it's just to me uh, very silly I mean yeah, so interesting next question um, yeah. so uh, the next verse is 2761 um, the earth does not rotate so here's what they're quoting the verse is uh, again 2761 is he not uh, brackets better than your gods who has made the earth as a fixed abode Mm -hmm. in bold writing, okay. uh, I assume the bold writing is an in Quran, uh -huh. and has placed rivers in its midst, and has placed firm mountains therein, and has set a barrier between the two seas of salt and sweet water. Is there any Allah, God, with God, uh, with Allah? Nay, but most of them know not. So Quran 2761. And um, so the objection here is, there's another verse we're objecting to, mm. uh, but the objection here is, uh, they say, the author of the Quran mm -hmm. repeats a common view of the 7th century that the earth was a fixed and unmoving object with the stars, sun and moon revolving around it. Heliocentric, is that heli? No, that's the sun-centric. So this is like yeah. the earth-centric model. Geocentric. Geocentric. And the, uh, the author appears to be unaware that the sun is rotating around its axis and moving through space around the sun. Okay. So the objection is that. And uh, so uh. who has made the earth a fixed abode? So they're saying it means the earth is fixed, it doesn't rotate. Mm. And there's another ayat they have a problem with in, yeah. uh, on, along the same lines. Is not he who has made the earth a as a fixed abode, mm. meaning stable and stationary so that it does not move or convulse because if it were to do so it would not be a good place for people to live on uh, I think this is a commentary of Quran they're quoting okay, so uh, what, what is the verse like uh, 2761 uh, 27 earth is fixed 61. doesn't rotate this, okay so 2761 yes read a sound of Bismillah أَمَّنْ جَعْلَ الْأَرْضَ قَرَارًا وَجَعْلَ خِلَالَهَا أَنْهَارًا وَجَعْلَ لَهَا رَوَاسِيَ وَجَعْلَ بَيْنَ الْبَحْرَانِ حَاجِزًا فَإِلَاهُمْ مَا اللَّهُ فَلَأَثَّرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So, um, in this commentary, so in, in that you are reading, uh, 
in the translation, let's say, it says uh, the earth as a fixed abode, mm. stable, stationary, it doesn't move or convulse. Right? Yes. So that's, that's, that's a commentary. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so that's a commentary. That's a commentary. So, but well, in the translation that they quote, yeah. it, they said um, fixed abode. Yes. Yeah? Uh, made the earth as a fixed abode. Okay. And over here, this is another like translation. Mm. It says, "Who is it who has made the earth a place of resort?" Okay. So, uh, and and has caused rivers to flow in its midst, and uh, has placed upon it firm mountains, and has placed a barrier between two masses of water. Okay. So, it says a place of resort. Resort. Resort, yeah. Like a holiday. Resort. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, has has made the earth a place of resort. Okay, so it's totally different translation. Uh, but what would place be... Place of resort. Because we're saying a fixed abode. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so to me, I, I, just in English, a fixed abode is just it doesn't mean that it doesn't move or the earth doesn't move and you know it's not saying that like earth is for example the house that you live hmm. this house let's say is fixed right yeah and it's is not it mentioning the stars uh, geocentric I mean this has got nothing there's no mention in that ayat about stars the sun geocentricity heliocentricity anything right no no uh, look uh, it, it just uh, okay, here is the thing. أَمَّنْ جَعْلَ الْأَرْضَ قَرَارًا It says قَرَارًا Okay, um, قَرَارًا is... In, in, in a way, you, like... Uh, sta like, st stable place where you can... Like, where we live, actually, at the moment. Like it's, a house. Like a house. Like, for example, this house, let's say. Yeah, it's, it's quite stable, right? It's not like shaking, it's not moving, right? Did, does this verse have any cosmological no. import no. for you? No, this has nothing to do with geology, no science of any kind, cosmology, this, that. So it's just saying, do you, like, you know, look around you. As if, like, you know, I, let's say, you know, I tell you, we go outside, you know, like into forest or something. I say, look how beautiful these, uh, let's say, flowers are. And I say, like, uh, look at, you know, the geometrical configuration of, of these petals, for example, on a daisy. Things like, and then you say, like, wow, I mean, how come, you know, like, this was formed in this manner? It's amazing, yeah? So, what uh, God is trying to say in, in this verse again like in the context saying that think you know all these things that you see around you it must be created by a creator it cannot come into itself and so and then here in this verse is saying also think about this earth like do you feel like shaking all the time or do you feel like um, uh, any instability in, uh, like in terms of living? Uh, you know, we, we go out, we, you know, we do things, we don't even feel the movement of Earth. So, this is actually a counter-argument, you can make a counter-argument from this verse to what they are thinking. Because normally, with the speed that the Earth is rotating, we, like, what what should happen? We should be like aware of it, or no? Of course, I mean, let's say you know um, you have something um, like this, you know, merry-go-round thing. If you just uh, increase the speed you know if you accelerate even further what may happen like the people who are on it may just yes yeah, centrifugal force and yeah but what will happen to them they will just fly off fly off yeah 
so but this is indirectly but from my uh, a prior a prior note you can say normally we should fly over yeah because uh, so then we are not so then what God is saying that think about this you are not flying over because this earth is created and you are created um, like for a purpose and in a very um, like systematic and calculated way in a very delicate manner so that's what this is saying uh, it's not saying like the earth it doesn't even I don't it doesn't even talk about like um, any sort of like fixed abode hmm. Well, I, you know, after your explanation, I must say I'm quite disappointed in my teddy bear falling for that yeah, argument. So but people do come across all kinds of stuff on the internet, so uh, yes, yeah, okay. Well, well, there's another one. Mm -hmm. uh, so apparently, this is under the heading of there are seven planets in the universe. Oh, okay. Uh, and the verse in question is uh, sixty-five twelve. Uh, so uh, they begin with their comment, this verse claims there are seven planets, however according to astronomers there are eight ordinary planets and... Uh, well, can, you, can you just read the verse? I'm, because I'm, I'm seeing a problem here because the, 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 the objection is titled seven planets in the universe yeah. and but they're telling us there are eight ordinary planets and five dwarf planets, I think they mean eight they're talking about the solar system and not the universe now but yeah. let's quote the verse uh, Allah who Allah is he who created the seven firmaments and of the earth a similar number through the midst of them all descends his command mm. that ye may know that Allah has power over all things and that Allah comprehends all things in his knowledge again I don't know what translation of the Quran they're using mm -hmm. but it's 6512 um, so it, it, it's it's quite clear, um, you know what 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 they think it's saying because they're saying uh, that there's a grand total of thirteen uh, planets and dwarf planets in our solar system. So eight ordinary planets, five dwarf planets. Modern astronomy also has found hundreds of other planets in other solar systems, mm. and cosmologists, presumably like yourself estimate that hundreds of billions of stars and planets exist in the universe so now we're talking about stars and planets I, I'm, so irrelevant okay, I, so I'm really getting annoyed with you Kuma because yeah. like you should really should have read this before I had to go and ask a scientist because I feel pretty dumb now because yeah this is all over the place we are they're talking about stars let's, planets uh, let's see the verse what, what the author verse is of the, uh, 65 12 65 12 okay let's see uh, the author of the Quran singling out such a small number of celestial objects only okay, reaffirms his ignorance that. of the makeup of the universe. Uh, but before you go on, mm. um, there's a tafsir interpretation of the Quran attributed to Ibn Abbas, mm -hmm. but by an unknown author and mm -hmm. date, mm -hmm. says that Allah means that all seven planets are flat planets. Mm. Uh, Allah is He who created seven heavens, one above the other, like a dome, and of the earths. Uh, the like thereof, seven planets, but they are flat. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... Um, like, I, I, I'd love to hear your explanation, yeah. but I'm oh, not oh, too oh, worried, because I think these guys themselves don't seem to know the difference. Yeah, but quite, yeah. quite ridiculous. Um, so, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmanirrahim. So, Allahu alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin wa min al-ardi mithlahun. So, this is the bit. Um, which is of our concern and Allah it is he who created seven heavens and like them the earth and uh, so this is the translation okay it is he who created seven heavens and like them the earth so first of all uh, we need to understand something very clear. In the Quran, um, certain places, you know, there are numbers. 
like six, seven, okay, three. So um, numbers also have, may have multiple meanings. If you take them literally, seven, then you can say yes, yeah, seven. Um, but sometimes um, we say in in Arabic um, like number seven could be used in order to express uh, the plural, you know, the many, many of these uh, things. It doesn't mean literally seven. Okay, for example. Um, okay, in the Quran again. So this is um, mainly believed by uh, Mufassirun uh, that the seven C's does not mean one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These C's. It means like there's um, there's a metaphor in in the language. It means many seas. It's like uh, when we say hundreds of these people, or hundred thousand, or millions. So uh, sometimes, you know, when you say like um, he's a billionaire or he's a millionaire, sometimes people don't mean that actually this guy has millions, millions, millions. Hmm. It's like but saying loads. They, they, yeah, what they loads mean money, loads, but yeah. what they mean is this guy is rich. Hmm. So um, this is part of the language, right? So um, and here again, so created seven heavens and and like them the earth. So they're like uh, some. Co oh, yeah. hang on, the earth. Yeah. Where's where's a, where are these planets coming from then? I don't know. It talks about Earth, not planets. Um, yeah, and also the Earth has also two meanings. In uh, it could be a, a local place, Earth, hmm. like let's say over here outside. It could be the whole Earth. Also, it could be um, a kind of place where it is lower, like any, any kind of place, which is opposite of the skies or heavens, opposite of heavens. Like down to earth? Yes. Like a ground yeah. place, okay. So here, like, this is a very general statement. So hang on, what's it saying? So, there are seven heavens, which we don't know what they are, right? Exactly, yeah. So, what so be, is there like any consensus from Muslims like these are no, universes, dimensions? Yeah. No, there's no like that. Mm. Just you know, people uh, they, they they have opinions, opinions, yeah. They they just it's kind of like sometimes, yeah. Okay, that's important because I, I, I think my, my yeah. teddy wants you to come back to that because even Muslims talk about what are these seven heavens, but mm. there's no mention you of don't planets. Need to know, you know, what are these seven heavens and this that. In this verse, what it is saying, your God, yeah, is so powerful, okay? Uh, he's just uh, showing like how powerful Allah is. He can create anything He wants. Okay. So this is like, uh, and yeah, so it's just this is what like we understand like from, because like. Uh, let alone, you know, one Earth or one, uh, you know, particular universe or heavens, you know, whatever. So, creating that. What God is saying, He created many heavens. Not one, not two, yeah. Many heavens and many Earths. So, you can think maybe it is a planet like Earth. Maybe in another like uh, solar system or galaxy or a star system, um, like how you know we have certain structure here. There are also many others like that. This is what I understand from this verse. It doesn't talk about like solar system. It doesn't talk about planets. It doesn't like it's just. Uh, 
it, yeah, it's, it's just crazy, I don't know. Uh, okay, so the number seven is not to be taken literally, heavens is not to be necessarily taken literally as sky or yeah, universe. Uh, or this is the problem of extremism, you know, when you take things uh, literally and give them absolute meaning, then you run into problems. Well, I, I think, you know, I, I have to apologize on behalf of Kuma, but the problem is I don't think they've even taken it literally because yeah. uh, where's this? So planets aren't mentioned, but later on they've talked about this tafsir to kind of make it more pejorative mm. and make the Quran look bad because they brought in this tafsir of Ibn Abbas allegedly where it says uh, the planets are flat. So we, we didn't find planets in the Quran, okay. so you'll have to bear with me here. Yeah, okay. But now these planets we didn't find are flat. Where did that come from, from the Quran and your reading of the Quran, just briefly? Uh, there There's are not seven... a single statement in the Quran which says that the planets are flat or the uh, global Earth is flat. There is not a statement. Okay. Um... What, what there is, there's a statement. Uh, statements uh, for uh, again like uh, to draw the attention of people um, to uh, the surface of earth because we live on the surface right and with respect to our size and living conditions and comparison to like other planets at the moment from like we can understand this much better how harsh the conditions are yeah so our the surface of our earth is is uh, very accommodating you know for people to live right and there are also places where uh, people cannot live like so but we have places where we live comfortably so this is what it is. Okay, uh, well I'm kind of embarrassed about dragging out a man of science uh, to ask about this kind of question because it was quite uh, absurd. Uh, mm. Because as you said, planets were not mentioned at all. Yeah, no. um, so, I mean, this next one, I'm just looking at it. I, I tried to pick these at random, so I do apologize. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be having words with a teddy, okay. uh, you know, because this, this is, this is, I feel quite... I love this one. This is really great. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, I, the teddy, really thinking about apostating because of just like crappy arguments like this. I, I really think, you know, you, but we'll, we'll have a talk. But since you're yeah. here, let's, let's ask you. So, uh, uh, the next objection is that the Quran says the sun, moon and stars are created for humans. Uh, and it's a very brief objection they've put, but with lots of ayats. Mm -hmm. They have said the sun, moon and stars are much yeah. older than humans, mm -hmm. but the Quran states that their created purpose is for timekeeping and navigation. And the proof is, uh, there's about loads of ayats here, I'm just mm -hmm. going to read one and maybe people can get right, measure. Okay, so Quran 10.5. Ten five. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so let's see. Ten five. It is he who made the sun to be a shining glory and the moon to be a light of beauty in brackets, mm. uh, and measured out stages for her that ye may know the number of years and the count brackets of time. Mm -hmm. So the objection here is uh, apparently uh, you Muslims yeah. are saying mm. that. Um, the sun and the moon uh, are for humans so they can keep, uh, you know, they can know about timekeeping and navigation. But in fact, they're billions of years old and you're talking rubbish. Mm. Okay, what so, okay, let's see, let's see what the, what this uh, translation says. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can so, you show the yeah. viewers, and I, I think, I don't know if Kuma can see what translation, I, I've just given you one at oh, random. Oh, this one right? is um, Sayyid Abu uh, Ala. Uh, oh dear, okay, but that's and not necessarily so. a good one, I think, but anyway. Okay, so, and, and it's translated and edited by Zafar Ishaq Ansar. Okay, well, and we so don't know. Towards, towards understanding Quran, uh, so that's, and this is abridged version. Well, they should have read Wiki Islam, because not only mm. are these guys towards understanding Quran, they've understood it better than everyone else, it seems. But uh, yeah. As I told you, like, you know, there's Quran here, and there are people coming and taking some assumptions or making some assumptions and then going there 
and then there are others and they are going and looking at these assumptions and they start saying that Quran is wrong or there are mistakes in Quran but they are all here and the Quran is here mm. Quran has nothing to do with these people so um, this is a bit like a, yeah it's, 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 it's a, a bit problem straw manning yeah yeah so but please go on uh, yeah okay so yeah this verse um, it says he it is who gave the sun radiance and the moon light and determine the stages that you may learn the calculation of years and the reckoning of time um, so this is what this verse says and um, the complaint is that mm. you are saying that the sun and the moon were created so that humans could tell the time and navigate you know uh, here's the thing actually like uh, there's an amazing thing about this verse it's, it says جَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ ضِيَاءً وَالْقَمَرَ نُورًا So, um, again, like, you know, Allah is uh, trying to uh, draw our attention to uh, certain elements so that we can ponder upon. So, such as, He created the sun and the moon, you know, and everything else. And then He... Uh, created all these conditions for us to live and he gave us lots of blessings so uh, think so if it wasn't for the stars then um, like if it wasn't for the moon and the sun how would you um, like live your lives in a way like how would you uh, keep your time it's, it's not saying the sole purpose of the creation of uh, the, the moon is to be uh, a navigational instrument no no what this is saying look all these things they are created for a purpose yeah so you are not here in this world merely to play around waste time okay and to like to be selfish for selfish reasons so you are created for a purpose that's what the uh, this verse is saying why it is specifically talking about the sun and the moon because normally throughout the years people how do like how do they uh, go about their daily lives uh, without timekeeping Yes, this is sun and the moon until you have exactly. quantum clock. This is actually it. saying that this verse. Look, time keeping. You have limited time. Okay, make sure how you go about your daily lives. You know, you do time keeping. You have to also do time keeping in your life. Yeah, and uh, you are not here to waste time. So. Um, you know, calculate, you know, compute, organize your life and know that you are not created to just play or waste time here. Well, you are created for a purpose. Go after that purpose, whatever it is, just go and find out. And the, another thing here, for example, in this verse, it specifically assigns um, a dhiya to the sun, which is uh, a form of light, and also nur to um, to the moon. Like nur and Odia, they can be interpreted as light, form of light. But the interesting thing here is, to the sun, it refers as like a radiance, because it is the source of the light, whereas the moon is not the source of the light. So the light is being reflected from the moon so and it, it differentiates between these two and when you think about it you know um, this is quite extraordinary at, at the time like you know making these sort of uh, differences and yeah so uh, this has nothing to do with like uh, what they're claiming like, it's just again like uh, something very silly 
I think um, they have a very unique way of reading books that they don't like and uh, literally okay. just looking at every single sentence oh, because yeah. going through this uh, I think any person who is kind of not just coming from a consultation with a forensic psychiatrist yeah. just won't it's, read it's books in that way ridiculous. they've literally um, gone through every I, I think the next one might be another example um, you know if I wasn't you know yeah if, if I was to be kind of like these uh, you know be this very paranoid reading so the, the next one is called night is a veil Mm -hmm. um, and the, the ayat in question, just to let you find it, is 754. Oh, 754. And uh, the problem uh, appears to be, uh, Night is just the darkness of space, as seen from the Earth, due to rotation. Uh, they haven't really commented any more, uh, but the ayat is, Your guardian, Lord, is Allah, who created the heavens and the Earth in six days, and is firmly mm. established on the throne of authority. He draweth the night as a veil o'er the day, each seeking the other in rapid succession. I they haven't really explained what their problem is other than night is just the darkness of space, and we are saying allegedly uh, that he draws the night as a veil over the day. Um, so what? Uh, they they're saying that there's nothing special about the night. And is the, saying, the, uh, the God draws the night as a veil. So they're saying the night isn't a veil. This is again it's like just a, dark. It's not a thing. It's you, just darkness in space. You, oh my goodness! I, I don't know if they these people like. Uh, I think they don't believe in figurative language. Maybe. Yeah, probably. Like. Um, oh my goodness! I, oh, you remember the uh, Batman? What What do you call Batman? Like uh, I think you know that movie. Dark. The Dark Knight. Yeah. Yeah. But he's like a knight, like a crusader knight. Yeah. But not. What, 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 so, uh, you know, when you say like, um, like dark something, or let's say, you know, soldiers. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, so that when they want to uh, go and attack, you know, certain places, mm -hmm. they wait for the Nightfall. dark. Yeah. yeah. So why? Because that darkness becomes kind of veil, like a, like protection for them not to be seen, right? Yeah? Yes. So normally like criminals, they go out when? During the night time. Why? I think... Because they... Because the darkness, the, the night, there's no light. If there's no light, how are you gonna see? So hence, like that darkness becomes kind of veil, right? So this is like a figurative speech. It's a, it's a metaphor. I mean, it's an unavoidable part of language. I would have thought. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, uh, it's too much. I, I mean, think I'm just... they are being uh, ultra. I'm uh, not ultra. I think they're just being Wahhabi and saying that the veil oh, is no. a literal veil and there isn't like a veil, like a giant veil which God draws over the earth and your Quran yeah, is to be taken it's... literally that is, like I said, it's very odd for them and I presume some of these people at least are from a kind of Judeo-Christian background I don't, I don't and, know, uh, I don't want to I don't comment, know either, but I don't there's a lot of figurative language in, 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 in every yeah. religious and even non-religious book so uh, okay, oh, uh, uh, did let's you say this. Can, can, the Quran can I... does not say mm -hmm. that literally that fabric, you know, that veil, the fabric that we feel. So the Quran does not say uh, that darkness or the night, yeah, is is a fabric like that veil. Okay, the, like a piece the, of cloth. Yeah, piece of cloth. Uh, but, yeah. but but actually, I'm I'm just uh, uh, Kuma is telling me. That she thinks you're just saying that because you're a lying Muslim, and uh, okay. uh, and you you know actually that when uh, people oh in goodness. the past read this ayat of the Quran mm. and the commentators, they actually took it to be a a actual literal veil of cloth. Uh, <laughs> uh, please, can we go to the next question? <laughs> are, are you because saying that's not the case? It's too much. Like, did, did any Muslim, to your knowledge at all, ever take this to mean a, a veil of a giant veil of any material, uh, even some kind of I don't know quantum fabric, which was being oh, used? Oh gosh! 
I'll, okay, I'll take Jeez, that as a no. Yeah. Silly um, Teddy. Again, I apologize. She's, uh, next she's question, confused. please. Uh, um, we, we have a limited time. When... Uh, well, the next one is Earth created before the stars. Mm. So this looks like it might be something, okay? So, uh, okay. you know, uh, okay, here it comes. So, uh, just so you can get the eye at while yeah. I'm reading this. Which one? 229. All right, let's go for it. Uh, so, um, you know, the author of the Quran mm -hmm. is also unaware that the elements of the Earth's crust and core were first formed in stars. Modern science has proposed that all of the elements that make up the Earth, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, iron, etc., were originally formed by nucleosynthesis in stars and then expelled into the universe when those stars supernova. Yet, the Quran describes the Earth as being formed before the stars and from smoke or material that predates stars. All rocky and gaseous planets in the universe were formed in a similar manner to the Earth and the Quran singling out the Earth only further highlights the author's ignorance of the history of the formation okay, of celestial objects. Okay, okay, that's enough. Objects. I'm already having like, you know, kind of uh, headaches. Please, uh, let's, uh, like, let's, let's summarize what they are saying. Okay, they're, okay saying, they're saying Earth created before stars. Is this the claim of Quran? That's what they're saying. And the proof is, mm -hmm. He it is who created for you all that is in the Earth. Mm -hmm. They tur then turned He to the heavens and mm -hmm. fashioned it as seven heavens, and He is knower of all things. Does it talk about stars? Uh, well, he's there saying that mm. uh, he created for you all that is in the earth, mm -hmm. then he turned to the heavens and fashioned it as seven heavens. Okay. So they're saying earth was made before the seven heavens. Alright, so this says, let's see what this uh, translator is saying. Um, Alright, so. Uh, uh, okay. 229 apparently. Okay, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Huwa alladhi khalaqa lakum ma fi al-ardi jami'an thumma stawa ila al-samai fasawahun sab'a samawat wa huwa bi kulli shayin alim. So, it says, it is he who created for you all that is on earth and then turned above and fashioned it into seven heavens. He knows all things. Okay? So again, the same, same uh, understanding here. Because these are like all similar statements, and uh, what the purpose of this verse is uh, saying, again like the other ones, all human beings. Allah created everything around you. Look at, look around everything. All these things, Allah created these things for you. Allah created this earth for you to live here for a short period of time okay and things that you eat things that you know you use you like make um, clothes you know uh, vehicles everything he created these things for you uh, all, all, all the you know material he created all these things for you so, or anything that you can imagine. And then, um, what else? Like, ثم استوى إلى السماء فسواهن سبع سماوات. Also, um, he create uh, like fashioned um, the the sama, you know, the which is the opposite of Earth. What is it? Like, it could be atmosphere. Yeah. Well, it, this is what you be. were saying before. We don't know. Is it sky, yeah. atmosphere, yeah, heavens? Yeah, you can like from here. What I understand, space. It, it, we don't know. Yeah, it, from here, what I understand, because it's talking about like the Earth where we live. Yeah, because now the the subject is us now. Mm -hmm. It's talking about to humans. Right. Where so we live we, on this particular. Yeah, this Earth. particular oh, Earth. Yeah. And then, what is the opposite of this particular Earth? The sky. Sky, so that and then what we said about like seven heavens, like some layers, you know, which are kind of uh, like fashioned in, in a sort of like layers. 
So okay. it, it might it so might be the atmosphere which does be, come it, after the Earth. It could be atmosphere, like you know, with different uh, like. Is, uh, is stars like, mentioned here at all? I mean, because I'm curious. It could be me. atmosphere. It could be like you know, uh, heavens. We like th this could be anything. But dimension. Is it stars? Hmm? Does it say stars? No. Can you interpret that as stars that no, are like created the Earth has and then the to stars? Do with stars? No. So heavens. And also, it does not even say after. Oh, okay. So it's it's not like you know, created the earth. Well, they're saying after, but even if you say after, like they're saying it says then turn to the heaven. Okay, here's the thing. Let's say you know, look at the creation of the earth, and the uh, the the earth was created, and then the atmosphere atmosphere is formed later on, right? Hmm. Yes. So. Like, uh, Are you like saying that it, it, it talks about the Earth and... Because this is what you were saying before, that yeah. we don't actually know what the Quran okay, says about let's, heaven. Let's, let's say this. Let's say we are in a, uh, on, a, on another planet. Hmm. So the, the Earth-like uh, planet, let's say, or similar to Earth. And, uh, but rather than you see like blue sky, you see like a yellow sky. Because it is made out of some sort of different material, and atmosphere also may have some different like qualities. Hmm. So then you will not see it like blue, but you may see yellow, hmm. or you may see red. Hmm. So the earth is fashioned for you, and also um, the the heavens that you look towards, they are also fashioned. That's why it's the same, you know. So. It doesn't talk about stars, it doesn't talk about anything like that. And it's just, again, like uh, pure ignorance and I, d don't, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, you have to be gentle. I know you're kind of like a Sufi person and the bear sitting right there and you're calling it ignorant. I mean, anyone no, we can We are get... all ignorant uh, on certain subjects. Okay. So um, these people are clearly ignorant in that particular subject. So. But you can't um, blame the bear for coming across these kind of because unfortunately yeah. the internet is full of this stuff. I, I, yeah, I, unfortunate. I, but, I, I uh, didn't want so to hence really. We need to like uh, take time and uh, point out, you know, these uh, flaws. Well, uh, can I? Can I? Why we, I've got we don't you. have to know everything, okay? So if you know some people, well, I, I hope yeah, the viewers so. can get an idea of how kind of maybe quite silly some of these. Uh, criticisms are. It's just uh, it's a. Uh, I I don't even know. You know how to address this. Uh, okay. Well, uh, maybe you could maybe you could just tell us bluntly. So uh, you're you're saying that. Please do not. You know, pay attention to these. Uh, uh, what do you call stories? Lies. Uh, Did, uh, like. Uh, I think it's just called the internet now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, too much. Uh, how about this then? Uh, I, again, I, I wanted to ask you this one because it's right up your kind of alley uh, as a as but a, they're as a all cosmologist. the same. I think uh, if we s uh, talk about some other issues, I, I, you know, just one more. Okay. Uh, because on. you know, you you did say that you're gonna come over for Kuma and okay, explain yeah, some things yeah, to right, her, and okay, you know, okay. it was me and her it was getting quite heated, and you know, um, so the universe was made from smoke by contraction. Uh, so, if you could just look at uh, Quran 41 verses 11 to 12, so that's 41 verses 11 to 12, mm. then he turned to, and I do apologize to viewers and Muslims, and you know, uh, I, I don't know what translation of the Quran they're using, uh, then uh, turned he to the heaven when it was smoke, and said unto it and unto the earth, come both of you willing or loth, uh, they said we come obedient, then he ordained them seven heavens in two days and inspired in each heaven its mandate. Mm -hmm. And we decked the never heaven with lamps and rendered it inviolable. That is the measuring of the mighty Benoah. Uh, so that's the ayat. Mm. And the objection is, uh, so they're saying the universe was made from smoke by contraction. Neither was there any stage of formation of the universe that involved smoke, carbon particles suspended as a result of combustion. Mm. 
So smoke is to be. I I really do think Wiki Islam is a Wahhabi organization because they're saying so oh, right. smoke has to be taken literally as carbon particles suspended as a result of combustion. Uh, but they continue. Nor did the heavens and earth come together at any point of time. Earth is a part of this universe and has developed within it. Mm -hmm. The next verse clearly states. Uh, so they're going on on some other. But maybe you could just stick to that. So okay, what is the um, what, what, the objection what is that your Quran mm -hmm. says that um, there was a, a, a stage of the universe that was smoke, mm -hmm. which means carbon uh, suspended mm -hmm. from fire. Uh, so there was never any stage of formation of the universe that involved smoke. So you lied, and uh, nor did the heavens and earth come together at any point. Um, so there was no coming together of the heavens and the earth, and there was no stage of smoke, and you lied. So how how do you respond to that? Okay, um, and um, so. And I must say, Kuma is quite convinced let's, by let's this read one. It. Yeah. ثم استوى إلى السماء وهي دخان فقال لها وللأرض اتيا طوعا أو كرها قالت أتينا طائعين. Okay. So. So it says, uh, then he turned to the heaven while it was all smoke, okay? And uh, so, he said to the heaven and the earth, come into being, um, like, uh, so they were like, Let's say the Earth or, or a star or galaxies, you know, because um, it's all the uh, process. Um, okay, we're not sure what Quran means by Earth, is what you're saying. It could be is no, it no, this like, particular. Yeah, earth? so the, the Earth like objects, let's say. Okay. Okay. So can so, Earth mean I, and, and, universe yeah. or can it just mean no, Earth? No, no. Well, earth is Earth, okay. Yeah, earth but is kind earth. of. Okay, so right. uh, Earth. Earth is something like uh, uh, the way I I understand um, Earth is like a gravitating object. Okay. In, in a way, like a matter. Mm. Okay. That come together. So hence, um, it is used like you know uh, in, over here that uh, when the when the heaven, let's say, you know, um, there are particles in, in outer space, particles, everything is like particles, kind of. Um, we can also like think uh, like in terms of small like pebbles, small rocks, you know, all these kind of things. You know, Not for, for that. like s literal cigarette smoke. No, oh. no, okay. So what this is saying is the earth or the heavens, it was not in the state of what you see today. It was in a different state, okay? So then what we said is, you know, coming to that state of today. And we still like, you know, uh, know, like from our observations, and uh, also uh, like scientific uh, experiments, assumptions, etc. The Earth was not like this. And if you look at how it is created or formed, then we will understand that it wasn't even a, a ball like this, you know. It started from all these, you know, like small um, things which looked like kind of like smoky. Yeah. So smoke doesn't mean like a cigarette. Carbon. Uh, it has to be carbon and from combustion apparently. Yeah. So it's just uh, look. You know, sometimes you look at a um, let's say window, and you cannot see the other side. Some some people they say oh, it's a bit like smoky. You know, I, I can't. I cannot see. Smoke does not mean like, you know, 
particles. Even you can say like fog. Let's say you know it's foggy. Yeah. It could be like oh, it's like kind of smoke. It, this is some. It could be any any kind of. It's very hardcore literalism. Actually. Yeah, it's, even you can, even you can't apply this, that to scientific language. I, I want to say it. this book is not a science book. Okay, it is a book for human beings like every single human being to understand in a simple manner so if you take everything literally you'll not understand what this book is saying or any book or any saying. other <laughs> book for that uh, for this uh, yeah for that reason um, so and the, you have to approach it with sincerity like you you have to say, you know, I want to understand. I, Otherwise, I hate to do this to you, especially as you, you know, you made time out from uh, uh, to 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 sort of uh, answer these questions. Uh, but uh, sort of following on from your point of not taking things literally, mm -hmm. uh, the Wiki Islam complains that the sky is a tent or dome, according to Muslims uh, in Quran two twenty two. Mm. Uh, and in Quran 13.2 so mm -hmm. it is he who made the earth a couch for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and the sky a dome uh, okay. I can see where yes. this is going uh, and um, which verse is that? 2.22 uh, so let, let's go through them systematically uh, I'll read the objections no, just, just one is enough because uh, it's but they've, 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 yeah. they've given you three verses 2.22 two yeah. two and they also object to the, uh, Allah is he who raised the heavens without any pillars that ye can see and yes so that's in 13 too mm. okay um, so and let, let me just uh, mm. so, sort of hit you and, uh, and kuma where, where does it say tent uh, well apparently uh, a common myth at the time of a Quran's composition mm. was that the sky or heavens were held up with pillars, uh, no reference. Mm -hmm. uh, many Bedouin people living in Arabia imagined the sky as a large tent covering, uh, similar to the tents they that's used, uh, that's kind of racist. That's, yeah. Because uh, like lots of people <laughs> lived in tents. Uh, no, and, uh, yeah. And no, there's no I'll reference to that, yeah. <laughs> the author, rip, uh, you know, this has just been... And also Muslims are uh, not from like uh, only Arab countries. Well, like they could be from any country, you know, even at the time. Even, well, they were like uh, Persians, yeah. they were... Roman mm. Muslims uh, yeah. and Indian apparently is Indian, South Indian. Yeah, so uh, but the author repeats this myth by yeah. describing the sky as being raised above the earth. I must say yeah. this is quite ethno like this is quite quite you know xenophobic because they're basically saying Arabs lived in tents. So of course they're so stupid. They realized that like you know well, we live in a tent, mm. so the earth must be a giant tent and the sky. <laughs> Uh, that that's that oh literally is Too what they've said, and it Sorry, is yeah. it is he who made the. Oh yeah, I, you know I really am against domestic violence, but I think I'm gonna have to slap Kuma around a bit for actually falling for this kind of stuff. I, I, I you know what your internet subscription's Let. gone, Kuma. Like uh, it is he who made the earth a couch for you and the sky a dome. So I don't know where the tent thing come from came from sorry but apparently the sky is a tent or dome same can thing I, can I? sorry yes. okay bismillah rahman rahim so alladhi ja'ala lakum al arda firashan wa samaa bina'a okay so sana bismillah so it is he who has made the earth a resting place for you yeah so this this one says resting place what would you say from your kind of Arabic, uh, uh, just without the tafsir, is just your kind of reading of the Arabic then? Yeah, like uh, I, I think this is a correct translation, rest in place. Um, in a way, like where. Um, so, like, like I, would, I would say, like dwelling place. They, they've used couch. Yeah. They've used the word couch, like a sofa. Uh, I think we can see why some of these translations it, it, have been selected. If you use that, then it, it, you take that extremely literally. Yes. Okay, uh, so that's, uh, that's... I don't think that's surprising, uh, given um, what's... Yeah, and um, so, and the sky a canopy. And uh, so... So the objection is canopies, tents... Domes, yeah, like it's all Islam and those. And the those other thing is, bina, 
Bina means uh, like you 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 construct something, you know. Uh, after some, let's say this, uh, you put the foundation, and upon that foundation, uh, above it, you know, something you construct. So in a way, like you know, the earth. Let's say we have the earth, and then uh, after the formation of earth, uh, the um, the atmosphere has been constructed and it's an ev like kind of evolutionary process you know that, that construction so it is not something fixed in these verses what we see is um, the creation is constantly happening does that make sense like, well, uh, uh, the, the like and and if you look at the uh, atmosphere it it really protects us uh, from lots of things. And the first thing is, I mean, everyone is talking about like ozone layer, right? Oh, you know, it's, uh, there's a hole, this, that, so it's, it will cause cancer, it will cause this, cause that. If you think atmosphere is not protecting human beings or other like creatures yeah, from harmful things, then why do you use like... Um, all all sorts of like um, sun protective like creams and you know this that obviously it has um, that protective um, role uh, uh, so that's that's what like this is an analogy of a house you know first you build the foundation and then you put the uh, whatever you know you have roof over it. So th this is that kind of like analogy. It's it's not like uh, I literally, you know, this that. So I, I just okay. That's uh, I I think we've seen a theme running through here uh, yeah. of uh, quite extreme it, literalism. It's a movie like Sky is a Tent and Dome. Uh, so I think uh, we should take a break, and uh, so we'll. I think we need to take a break because uh, Akuma is quite traumatized. She's looking yeah. quite worried and. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, she, she's looking quite unhappy now. Although um, she's a mischief maker. Well, I mean, I, I did have sympathy for her concerns because she's not a scientist mm. and she's not a theologian. She's, she's a Japanese, though, so... She, she, but didn't study theology or science, actually, despite oh. their quite rigorous uh, high school system. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I think she, she needs time to um, process. So we'll, we'll take All a right. short break and then come back. Okay.